everyone welcome to another episode of simply investing i know it's been a while and i'm here to talk about taxes as i run some errands before my big move and number one thing a lot of people want me to talk about with taxes is in regards to your 401k and it's taxes is probably the one thing people underestimate when they try to when you're planning for retirement and what you need to understand is your taxes you know, you, you, you need to anticipate and have not only money aside to pay your taxes on time, so you know, you don't want that to pile up, but also taxes in regard to your 401k. And your 401k is not taxed until you withdraw from it. And a lot of people forget when you withdraw from it, you can't withdraw from it until you're right of the age of uh, 55, I believe, but you probably shouldn't be touching it until you're. 63 or 70 let it sit in there the max amount of time before you need to retire and when you withdraw if you withdraw before the 55 year period then you will you will suffer 10 percent uh tax penalty on top of the income taxes that you will pay so instead of paying your retiree income taxes you'll be paying your regular income taxes because it'll be added on to your annual income which is something you just you don't want to do now it's it's tough to you can't really anticipate because if you're 20 years old trying to plan for taxes when you're in your 60s you're gonna you're just gonna have a headache the best thing to do is to put I would say roughly probably an extra 75 bucks a month specifically towards any tax consequences of when you start withdrawing the money that way you can um, you can plan you can have some money to compensate for it or just add to your liquidity of your uh, of your financial savings but what you should do is right around your fifth to avoid getting those hefty taxes on taxing everything on your 401k odds are most of us will have a 401k after 30 years of about two hundred thousand dollars so what you want to do is put that into an interest-bearing investment annuity something that gives you about six to eight percent on a regular basis six or eight percent a year that way you can live off the interest and have your Social Security, your uh, your personal savings, your personal investment, your home will, should be paid off at this time, and things of that nature. That's probably the one thing people for. I mean, people say Social Security is going to disappear. You know, Social Security isn't going to give you eighty thousand dollars, but it's not going to disappear. So. You can count on Social Security giving you $32,000 a year. It doesn't seem like a lot, and it isn't a lot. But, I mean, a lot of people do survive off of that, unfortunately. But to help you guys out and anticipate, you should understand you're going to have your $32,000 from your Social Security. And what you should do to back that up is your investment in your Roth IRA and your 401k, you're going to now roll over into an interest-bearing annuity that's going to give you stead steady yearly or monthly or quarterly payments. So you want something that's going to give you an extra twenty to $25,000 a year on there. And that, that will help. Not only will that your total amount not be taxed and because you're rolling it into another investment, but only the interest that you're coming off will be taxed and will be taxed as your secondary income so you'll pay a little less on taxes on that because your social security will be your primary income while anything extra that you earn will be your secondary income and what's going to help cover the gap is I always say your personal savings and you should have three or four accounts in three or four separate banks that you're just constantly socking away money sounds boring sound doesn't sound fun at all you know not glamorous and you know you, you, for for most people you might have to limit 
who you go out with, who you talk, and, you know, how many times you go out, and things of that nature. And that's a sacrifice. Do you want to live comfortably in your golden years, or do you want to party now and pay for it later, you know? And unfortunately, a lot of a lot of millennials want to pay for it later and party now. It's like, you might as well pay for it now while you're, while you're young, while you're young enough that you can work two jobs if necessary, or work long hours, get, you know, work the hard hours to get promoted, save a lot of money. I mean, I see so many millennials jumping right into, right into, uh, right into, like, some big decisions. Like, they go right out of high school into college, right out of college, you know, they're like, oh, I'm 26 and I got a house. Probably the biggest mistake you can make financially. And people say, like, well, you know, you should get a house. Or something. No. At 26 years old, you're not ready for the costs of maintaining that home. I've seen so many people get in trouble. You, they buy a house, and you, you, they don't understand. They max themselves out. And, they, and you haven't worked enough to have a couple, to have $100,000 in your savings to prepare for that. So what happens is the driveway needs to be replaced. Can't afford it. And a driveway costs a lot. And... Even for basic just gravel and putting some asphalt down, it's like 8500 bucks. That's, that's a lot of money. It's new siding, and throw another 15000 on that. Windows, that's another twenty grand. Depending on, you know, how much you want to spend on it. What else? Oh, the roof. Uh, that could be up to $30,000 just for a new roof. Termite damage, pest damage. All that stuff has to be considered, and when you're 26 year old, 26 years old, or even in your 20s, you're not thinking about that. You're just thinking, I got a house. I'm I'm the boss. I got a house when no other people weren't. Just because someone doesn't have a house doesn't necessarily mean you're financially better off than them by owning a house. You should own a house when you have plenty of money in the bank to sustain the cost of ownership of a house. And uh, being a financial advisor I have so many clients come in and saying like what happened to my you know mortgage and things like well taxes went up you bought a brand new house it was under empty lot taxes now the state caught up now it's under the taxes of the home plus land so that's an extra two three hundred dollars a month it didn't account for that and I see a lot of Millennials go right up to their bare minimum. they're not saving at all so you never know I mean a tree could fall on your house I mean, if a tree fell on my house, I would want to fix it right away. I, and people are like, well, I'll wait for the insurance. I'm not waiting for the insurance. I'll have the insurance reimburse the money, but I'm going to get that shit taken care of right away. There, there's going to be no, well, you know, I, I can't get it. No, there's going to be, I'm getting a new house. I'm getting a new house or I'm getting it fixed right away. That's just the way it is. And, but people don't think about that. And when it happens, it's all of a sudden now you, you got to live in a hotel while your house gets further destroyed by the elements while you're trying to live in it or you're trying to get back into it. I'd rather have $100,000 in cash just in case that happens. I can just say, okay, start, start repairs right away. Get my house taken care of right away. It's my house. I don't want to live in a hotel for long. And that's the way you need to think when you get a house. I mean, there's so much stuff that could happen, and it has happened, and it does happen. And no, and it's, it's you. You can't prepare for everything, but you should have a cushion to, pre to prepare yourself for some of the necessities. I mean, you may buy a house, and it could have been faulty plumbing. Yeah, it's going to be covered by whatever warranty or insurance, but it needs to be fixed now. And sometimes, like a, a busted pipe by your water heater can add up to a $5,000 bill very quickly. So it's just things like that that you got to prepare for. And I, I think the millennial age group just isn't prepared for that. Just isn't prepared for that. And I don't know why. I don't know why millennials aren't prepared because they're not preparing themselves for a lot of things. Not a lot of savings. 
I mean, ideally, you should be saving $100 out of every paycheck at, at the very minimum. At the very minimum, you should be saving $100 out of every paycheck. But millennials aren't even, aren't even doing that. Like, you get married, you get a house, you have kids, daycare. It's like, good Lord, you just compiled all those costs of living right away. Save your money. It's okay. You don't have to get a house and get married and have kids right away. I mean, you, you can wait till you're in your in your 30s or in, in your um. I would say the best time to buy a house is when you're 35. You have worked 15 years, so you have this great work history with with the company you work for, or at least you got a long-standing reputation, so it's easier to get a mortgage. You you've built up your credit score, so you're not coming out getting a low 700. You're probably coming out with a hot, with a mid 800. You're probably like an 820 FICO score. Very good. So you get a much better rate. You've learned to, and because of your age, they're going to give you a better rate. And you save some money. You got your 401k set up. You got 15 years of your 401k. Your um personal savings you know you've done all the bullshit and craziness so you so you're ready for that house and you got to think of it the same way as when you're trying to prepare for for retirement too it's like that's you get the sooner you start the better off you'll be although most of us even if you're in your 30 you're probably not going to retire till you're 70 or 65 68 so you still have a long ways to go. So there's there's no worry, there's no threat there. So if you if you're if you're 32 and you haven't saved anything, it's not a problem. You, you can you're still at a great time because the markets. If you put your money in now in 30 years, you're going to be plus on the markets anyway. Your 401k is going to be higher anyway. Everything's going to be higher regardless. My suggestion is put it in, don't monitor it until it comes up to the time. So I would say don't worry about it until you hit the age of 60 and you're, you know, you got five years so you're getting ready to retire. That's when I would withdraw the money. Right. Now that's it for Bobby's rant today. I'm um, gonna go in get some stuff for you know for moving thank you guys keep subscribing you need to get to a thousand subscribers today I'm gonna be posting a lot of videos before I hop on the plane um, it's gonna be so it's gonna, you're probably gonna see like three or four videos pop up so stay posted always comment give me feedback ask questions I'll try my best to answer as many as I can it's been busy lately too Visit uh, the Facebook page, uh, Simply Investing 2015. Like us, follow us, comment on there, chat, chat amongst yourselves. That's that's what it's there for. Just talk to each other. So, and that's that's the best way to learn how to to um, enhance your investing. I'm gonna do another video shortly after I get my supplies and print some things on a stock pick that someone wanted me to do. So I will look that up for that. For that person in the meantime stay focused respect the process thanks for watching like and subscribe and i'll see you next time